Well, I did talk to him, uh, the owner, and he wants me to go ahead and do what I feel is going to be best. So we're going to remove that uh, angle. I'll rivet this roof down, seal over the top of everything, and uh, probably put a new top wiper seal on because once it comes off once, it's like a one-time push on sort of a seal. Uh, and it's the hardest one to get. The side ones you can do later easily. The top one, you have to have the topper off. And then we'll rebuild those things. First thing I have to do is clean that uh, fascia up really well. Second thing is clean up this slide out top really well. Gotta get this out to clean it. And uh, there's no way I'm gonna get this thing that long out the front door. So I'm just gonna go out the window. And rest on my uh, tool bag. I don't see anything wrong with this seal. It's in the way of getting this sealant off, so it's got to go. You know, this stuff doesn't stick very well. I'm not even sure what it is. Because it doesn't feel like uh, RV stuff, that's for sure. Huh. This stuff feels like stick flex right there. I'll we'll figure it all out. And of course I still have to clean the roof up here, get rid of all of that sealant, clean it up, get all the goop off, and then clean up this channel right there all the way down. In an ideal world, we would let this uh, air out for uh, a few days, if not a week or two, but we don't live in an ideal world and this person needs to have their motorhome back because this is their house. Ah, got attacked by salt. I was assaulted. But uh, what we could be done is this fabric could be dropped down. Uh, we could even cut it out. Now would allow it to uh, to air out, and you can just glue it back in place. So you could do that with most of this fabric here. You could slice it right up there, pull the whole thing down, let it dry out. That's what I'll recommend my customer do. But there's only so many hours in a day, and we got to get this thing done. So they have somewhere to sleep tonight. I'm going to continue on cleaning, but I figured it might be a good view point to see what the extrusion actually does look like. As you can see, that adds a lot of rigidity, along with that right there, because that fits in that socket within that fascia box. So it adds a lot of strength to... Uh, what would otherwise be an unsupported uh, wall becomes a structural header, basically. Ah, right, guys. But, uh, I broke a lot of razor blades on this one. But uh, go wipe this thing off, and at least this part's done. And the roof should be done. We can rebuild this thing. Of course, here's the roof. Uh, I gotta clean off. You can see how clean. Where no sealant was right there, and how nasty and gross that is where water was getting in. Of course, we saw that that seal gave out. So, I'd be lying if I said this wasn't tedious getting all this stuff out of there. But that's the last thing to do, and then we can put this back together. Alright, so I wasn't going to put this trim back on because I didn't want it to. Uh, cause a problem but this roof ends about a quarter inch short of uh, the frame and the fascia doesn't overlap onto that and this roof is very loose so I need to um, I'm gonna flip this around instead of being flanged on this side I'm gonna put the flange on the fascia side so I can come up to the end of it, seal all the way around, and use this to uh, screw down and secure the roof. I'll still put some sealant underneath right here. Uh, the existing holes so it won't line up because this molding slipped around. So I'll rivet that down because it's going to be riveted into uh, aluminum. But to uh, rivet uh, 
an edge like this down, it would take like a rivet, like every inch, inch and a half in order to keep it from uh, having problems or coming loose. So this seems like a better option for me. At least that's what I'm telling myself. All right, so I just mocked this up real fast. I'm gonna go on the roof and see if that'll work. Oh, you know what? I need to run the slide out room out. Fish is on right there. You can see how short it is. Can you see? About a quarter inch short, so I can use that to fill the gap and then, uh, fun. That is sarcasm. <sighs> Cripes. Wish that flange was a little bit longer. Yeah, because since the flange isn't quite long enough, it doesn't hold, hide the existing holes. Now those would be riveted, and I'll seal over the top, and then it'll be a turtle bond anyways. But I just made a black line right there so I can take the fascia off, and I'll know where this is supposed to go, because it's going to be hard to do this blindly, because I can't get screws this way. I have to do it from the inside with the fascia off. Alright, so I'm going to use ProFlex underneath the roof. Uh, it is still damp under there. But time is of the essence right now. Uh, this will stick to wet surfaces and act as a good adhesive too and stay fairly flexible. So I'll get that under there. I'll rivet down the roof through the existing holes and we'll put that piece of molding on and then we'll put the fascia on. I'll put the molding and the fascia on with the, uh, the Sikaflex 505. It's a really good uh, adhesive. Alright. So definitely in a situation like this, it's really nice to have the uh, power cocking gun. Otherwise, my hand would be dead already. She's underneath that lip right there. All the way down. So hopefully you can see when I push down on the uh, roof material. Squeezing out. That's what we want to see. I want to make sure it's coming up through those holes, too. Okay, so I just got dangle drill set up. So there's three sixteenths. Got a, I don't know, one inch shank rivet. And of course, there's no room against the ceiling to get my power tools in there. But there's one. Probably about five more to go. Alright, so all those rivets are down. So the roof should be secured. Now I just have to uh, put this trim on. I'll line it up against. The mark right there, put some screws in, get the holes going, and then I'll uh, back it off, put ceiling underneath, and screw it down for good. Okay, so there. I should go do a good job of sandwiching the roof and holding the edge straight. I had to back the hole off a little bit so that it did not uh, rock that molding. Uh, I just I have a whole bunch more to drill out, then I'll take it back off again, seal underneath, and put it back down permanently. And I'll be hitting these corners really hard with the sealant. I'm just using quarter inch self tappers. I'll call that inch long, inch and a quarter. Alright, so all those screws are in, now I need to take this back off again, seal underneath, clean it up, and then the face will go up, and then the uh, eternal bond or the tape will go from this point up the fascia to here and all this will be sealed like this edge right there will also be sealed it is ugly but we got way too much sealant on up here okay and then these screws are actually going to be running down into this guy right here i'll put one more bead on the back side of the fascia 
and then we'll get this and then we'll get this uh, put back up I'm just tightening this up you should be able to see it oozing everywhere oozing everywhere so it should be filling all the holes that's why I'd prefer to use a kind of a liquid sealant because it'll bridge gaps better than putty will so I still have more to put in all right so all those screws holding the fascia are tight you can see all the uh, sealant oozing out of there because I put way too much for some reason almost like I don't want this thing to leak again these are where the uh, wooden fascia still has to go on all right get the ones on top now well, I won't lie to you guys I did not enjoy doing that now I have to clean up my tool before it gets destroyed but We're nice and secure now. You can see those screws are going into the fascia. And this corner is very well sealed. Now I just have to clean that all off. Alright, so this is what we look like from the outside. All the sealant oozed out from both sides. And then we'll cover that with uh, some return of bond tape once it cures. I'll be honest, this was not supposed to take this long. All right, well, that's all wiped up. I just have to put the return of bond. I'm just going to go up to this edge right there and then wrap around the sides. And then that'll be the last little bit of fat flashing. Hey, right, good morning, guys. It's a little bit chilly this morning. Hi. Phoenix chili. We're gonna uh, try to finish up this uh, slide out roof repair and uh, get this thing on the road again. So I think with this view, you can kind of see this that flange was gonna be right here, was used to be right there. So there really wasn't anything sealing against that rear fascia right there, but now there is quite a bit because these screws actually run down into that fascia, made a big sandwich out of the whole thing. Uh, and the turn of bond isn't really a sealant, it's just going to be flashing. So now there's not a, uh, a place for water to pool up behind all that. Hopefully that solves a lot of problems. So I just have this uh, roof repair tape laid out in the sun to warm up some. I will be cutting it in half and starting from the middle, going down each side. Because uh, what I'm going to try to do won't be easy to do, even on two pieces. So I'm going to try to wrap it up around to the back side here, through this uh, corner, and then back around to the top of the roof right there. So I'm going to be making a 90 on that. So I have to work from the middle down to the sides. The sides, I do want it to uh, wrap over the side. Uh, not like how the factory did this with the uh, seam on top, but... Uh, I do want it to go over the top. So I'll have to do the top first, stop probably right about here, run the slide out room in, then go inside and then wrap the rest of it. Now, of course, that's my plan. I think it should go fine. Then we get this uh, slide out topper put back on. But to touch base with what I said yesterday, let's just say that this does solve that, that leaking roof problem. I think it should because uh, that was pretty obvious where it was leaking. But if it was leaking uh, out here too, this repair would have nothing to do with it, but I wouldn't know that because uh, it could have had two or three different places where it was leaking. This was a very obvious leak, but that's why I'm always hesitant to uh, want to fix slide outs or even adjust them. As I put quite a bit of work, effort, time, money, and parts into this repair, and if it's still leaking after all this, it's a very, it's very difficult to tell the owner or the, the customer that, yeah, I kind of repaired it and what I did work, but uh, there's still some more work you have to pay for. Nobody wants to hear that. And I don't really like to redo work either. It's a, it's a big risk to take each time. It's difficult to see. There's a lot of sealant oozing out of the top right there. I do need to get that out of the way so the tape will stick better. And I'll do one final pass with some solvent to clean off whatever residues might be left 
but you should be able to see the uh, the stark difference between the clean of a solvent and the dirty metal. All right, so I have enough slack back there to go over the edge, and so I'm gonna start at the middle. So I guess right about there is where I'm gonna start. Make a mark so I don't forget. I will tell you honestly, I'm not looking forward to doing this. I'm trying to uh, do this complicated uh, 90 degree in such a long length. It's just a recipe for disaster. I'll do my best. Now I'm gonna try to score this paper, uh, backing lightly so I can take off half of it and the other half won't stick. I don't wanna go too deep, so I'll see now. So the idea behind this is that I can peel off half of that, stick that part down, and this top that I'll wrap around won't get uh, stuck to anything yet. It's the idea. Now, believe it or not, that was not fun. And believe it or not, I'm actually happy with the way it's turned out, even though it doesn't look pretty, especially right about there. It is very difficult to put a turn up on or roof, say, roof tape down without getting wrinkles to begin with, let alone trying to make a 90 degree angle with it. But what we wanted to do was just make sure if water does get behind this wiper seal right here, uh, it can't build up and get behind that uh, that 90 degree uh, aluminum angle down behind that fascia. So this is just redirecting water. So it doesn't have to be completely pretty and most of the time it won't be exposed because the wiper seal is going to end right about here anyways. This last little bit I left to do on the inside when I run the slide out room in. I'll wrap it over because I can get to that really easily. That side's down now too. Don't judge me harsh. This isn't completely flat, this roof either. So now I just have to run the slide out room in a little bit so I can do the side corners, wrap it around. All right. So now I should be able to find, I just laying up right there. And now I just have to clean that off. And roll that over. We got that wrapped around the top. You guys can see, okay. Comes around, so any water gets up there, it comes around the corner. At least doesn't get under this molding right there. And that's what I'm working on. So just got the rear corner to do. It should be a little bit harder because there's not as good access back here. But I'm sure I can get it. Yeah, I can get it. Now, of course, I wish I could say we were done, but I still have to put the new seal on. There's a crimp seal, so it's gonna crimp onto this uh, lip right there. Just push it up. You can't have the slide out room all the way open. Otherwise, the back fascia, or that fascia we just replaced, will be trying to crush this seal on the inside. Uh, let's do that real fast and then get this job done. All right, so here's the old seal. It's got a uh, metal ring in there. I don't know if you guys can see in there. Not really a metal ring, but metal grippy uh, tabs in there. Probably easy to see at the end right here. A lot of times that actually rusts out on the top of these slide outs. It is a little rusty in there. Because I had to pull this off 
and some of it was torn a little bit. I figured it was best to uh, replace this. So this is just a double bulb wiper seal. There's a profile of it. Uh, some people in the industry call it something a little bit more crude than that, but uh, we'll call it a double bulb wiper seal. The um, only thing you have to do is basically push it in there, get it started and lined up, and then you get underneath it and you push up. But for this right here, I want to go ahead and bring this all the way to the edge as much as I can. That means I'm going to have to cut out this little bit so that, uh, because, uh, that radius is right there, that notch is right there. That way I can get that completely over. And then this flap will be right there still, and I'll use that more like a shingle. I like uh, it to help direct water off the top there, rather than button it up like right there. That's what we're gonna be looking at right about. This is what we'll be looking at right about there. Uh, some people like to, uh, super glue this edge together the factory did I'm not a big fan of that because it seems to tear the flyper so I'm not gonna do that but let me get that started and then we'll watch how this goes and yeah I know the side seals could probably be done at the same time but they don't look too bad and this guy's already probably spending more than enough money rather than uh, another couple three hundred dollars on slide seals and and the replacement and those are easy to do Anytime, the top seal you have to take the uh, you have to take the uh, slide out topper off. So this is the time to do it if we're going to do it. And uh, you might be able to see the uh, in here. You can see the inside of that uh, crimp ring a little bit better. That's what actually holds it in place. Just little teeth in there that grab it. That uh, that flange we're pushing it onto. Maybe that makes more sense. All right, it's hard to see. They uh, kind of notched out that, uh, that little area right there so that it will fit and tuck in there just fine. And we'll finish up the wiper seal afterwards. It's just hard to see, but it's getting uh, pushed up in there. We'll get you guys set up so you can see a little bit better. I'll try to push it as far over that way as I can, then I always follow up with a little bit of sealant right there. All right, so it's a little bit hard on your hands, but there's the wiper seal installed. The only thing you want to do, or make sure you do, is come back after the fact and go all the way around it, lifting up. Because sometimes um, you miss uh, some of the uh, the pushing area. So now you can see forms a pretty good border against that, and you can see the uh, tape underneath. So. I have to do now is finish the two uh, side seals so that they match up better and then we'll be done with this and then this might make more sense now so that wiper seal is becoming a shingle can you see yeah you should be able to see so direct water off of there from going back under there now you could trim it and uh, glue it onto the next wiper seal like that but it makes this really tight on the corner they tend to uh, tear over time I'd rather not tear the seal that I just put on. All right, that's back on again. So this job's finally done. All that work just to uh, hopefully do the a little bit better job than the factory did. All right, guys. So there you have it. A uh, two-day ordeal of uh, trying to fix a water leak on a. Front slide out, front driver's side slide out on a 2005 Monaco Windsor. Now Monaco also built Holiday Rambler, Beaver, and some Patriot, so there might be some uh, crossover with some of those slide outs. Uh, if you have a slide out leak, I guess that's a good place to look. But uh, 
yeah, wasn't a lot of fun. That's why I'm not a big fan of uh, repairing slide outs. But thanks a lot for watching, guys. Whew, I'm tired. We'll hope. All right, I'm all ready to go. I think this is all mocked up. And uh, we're going to hope for the best here. I like hoping for the best. Ow.